Okay guys, today's video is all about coffee. There's so many of us that love this drink. It is uh, huge in America and around the world. And this video goes out to Saturn, Systemic Divide. She specifically requested this. Apparently older Americans are more likely to drink coffee and there's statistics there, but it is also the number one drink in the world. Uh, there's lots of different facts and lots of different ways to prepare coffee, to drink coffee. You got iced coffee, you got lattes, um, but believe it or not, the thirst for coffee has actually come down since World War II. Interesting? I thought so. Uh, there's a green coffee bean there, and we're going to get into that because the purpose of this video is really about how to um, store your coffee long term in a stuff hit the fan situation. There's as many different opinions in this as there is in beekeeping or so many different things when we're talking about coffee. So bear with me, this isn't gonna be a, a tell-all um, when it comes to coffee. I am not the expert. I'm just compiling some information here and putting it out for you folks because apparently I've been doing it wrong for quite some time. So we're talking about how to store coffee in long-term stuff hit the fan situation. What I didn't know, and I was doing this wrong for the longest time, was I would buy coffee and I would leave it um, for the longest time, I buy the ground coffee, and I'd leave it in the jar, and it, it might take me a month or longer to go through a can. Heck, the stuff I got down at the off-grid cabin property might take three months or longer. What I didn't realize is that these uh, the, this coffee loses its flavor, and because it's porous, it really starts to pick up anything and everything around it. Um, a lot of people say freeze your beans, and that's one way to do it. A freeze your coffee, that's another way to do it, but then there's several other people that say, hey, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to freeze your coffee unless it's going to be a longer term situation. And if you do take it out of the freezer, uh, don't put it back in. So there's a lot of different sources here and I'm going to be happy to include the links in the video description. But I think what's really important to know here is if you love coffee and really like good coffee, I'm no coffee connoisseur. Um, Honestly, I'm not a Starbucks guy. I like Dunkin' Donuts. I prefer the light roast, but you know, whatever your cup of tea is, wink, wink, whatever your favorite cup of coffee is, um, it probably would behoove you to think about how to roast your own beans and how to store it long term. A lot of us talk about bartering in a, a long time, a long term grid down situation, and we look at things like alcohol or tobacco, uh, bullets, food, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but how many of us have thought about coffee in a barter situation? If you've read One Second After, I know specifically in that book, uh, the main character, John, talks about coffee and how it was non-existent when the lights went out, when the power went down and the grid went away, um, you couldn't get a cup of coffee. In, in the following book, the sequel, uh, one year after, it talks about a group that had coffee and what a delicacy really that was. So I would imagine um, because coffee is such an important drink and there's so many of us out there that are addicted to caffeine, it would be a pretty good idea to have a source of coffee and good coffee at that um, longer term in a storage situation. So um, I'm going to just kind of give you the Reader's Digest version of what you're looking at here and you can stop the video at any point in time and look and read these articles on your own or go ahead and click in the description below. But really what you want to do is you want to buy your beans um, green, whole, gr whole green coffee beans, and if you want to store them for a long period of time, you want to freeze them. Um, many people say that they'll last up to a year, possibly longer. You do not want to grind them and then freeze them. Uh, they won't last as long and the coffee won't taste as good when you do go to use it. So um, there's many different ways to roast your coffee, whether you're a light roast person or a dark roast person, and I'm going to have that later on in the video. You can check it out and take a look at um, the source in the article and they'll tell you how to do it. It's really not as difficult as I thought it was. I've never done it. Um, apparently it's part art and part science, but like so many other things that many of us are trying to learn in this uh, preparedness slash homestead uh, paradigm, it's something that it is kind of a skill and we might want to try it now while times are good as opposed to um, you know storing a bunch of green coffee beans and then waiting until after the fact and, and then having to do it in a grid down situation. Now I know some of you people are saying hey guys this is uh, a stuff hit the fan situation. I don't care about coffee. I care about survival. 
Well, I would be inclined to agree with you. However, like I said, um, there's going to be a lot of people going through caffeine withdrawals, and that could be a big deal. Uh, and if you're one of those people that are uh, highly addicted to caffeine in your morning cup of joe, or you're having you know five, six, seven cups a day, um, this might be of more interest to you. This is interest to me, of interest to me, whether the stuff hits the fan or not. I mean, who doesn't like a good cup of coffee versus a stale garbage cup of coffee? Um, frankly, I don't know the difference, uh, and I'm no co coffee connoisseur, as I said earlier, but I want to learn more about it, and I'd like to drink a nicer, better roasted cup of coffee today, let alone when the stuff hits the fan. So, whether you're preparing for doomsday or whether you're just preparing for tomorrow, tomorrow morning's uh, morning cup of coffee, this is interesting information, and uh, there's specific ways on how you can roast it. And again, guys, there are so many different um, opinions when it comes to this that I can give you mine, and who cares? Um, this is really subjective, and it's all about your taste buds, how you like to prepare your coffee, how you like to drink your coffee, because there's so many different ways, whether you have iced coffee or hot coffee or espresso or latte or any of that other stuff. But right here was a step-by-step -step guide about how to roast your own coffee. And step number one is choose a roaster. And there's several different things you can use. Um, it, I've heard people using uh, popcorn um, makers. That's, the, that's one. But you can roast it right on your stove. Uh, then you got to choose the green coffee bean. And um, they recommend a four-pound sampler pack, but do whatever you want to do. And then the roasting process. It talks about um, the different ways that you can use a light roast or a dark roast and, and when to take it off and wait you don't want to wait too long because if you wait too long the sugars burn completely um, and it'll re it'll really reduce the uh, well according I'm going to quote here it's going to reduce the roast to a uh, thin bodied cup of charcoal water yeah anyway I hope this information helps and if nothing else I hope it gets you thinking about coffee so I'm going to go ahead and leave a list of supplies and links in the description, the video description, where you can just go ahead, purchase the things you need, and you can start roasting your own coffee in no time flat. Hope you guys got something out of the video and the information. Have a great day. So I plan on doing a video in the near future of me roasting my very own beans. I'll make sure I post that and show you what's up. Oh, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It really does mean a lot if you share this video around. Thanks.